Hi you guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new, my name is Kyleen. If not, thanks for coming back. First of all, I just wanna address, like we're like real close right here, but it is currently 4.53 and I planned on filming this video earlier this morning, but it has been quite the day. I know I'm talking about sleep, but Rocky's naps today have like not been good, so kind of fitting to film this. But I just have kind of put this off a little bit because this is kind of a touchy subject so if you guys are here to just like criticize what I'm doing just go ahead and click on out but if you're looking for help I've had a lot of people request this video so that's what I'm here for last night Rocky actually slept 11 hours which is insane he just turned two months old three days ago so he's doing super well with sleeping but I just want to say too if you guys like have any questions or are concerned with your baby's health ask your pediatrician I'm clearly not a doctor make sure you approve what you're doing with your pediatrician before I'm just a girl on the internet so don't take everything that I say as like fact you know this is just like what has worked for me and my baby so I just wanted to get that little clarification out first and then now we can get into the video there's so many things when it comes to sleeping and I have a long long list I typed out all of this information because I did not want to miss anything so if you guys see me looking down quite a bit it's because I'm trying to stay on track Okay, so to start, I started doing sleep training around four weeks. Now, from day one, I feel like this is what has been super helpful, but when I got out of the hospital, they said he needed to eat every two to three hours. So naturally, I was waking him up every three hours if he was not awake to feed him. And so quickly, I got on a routine where I was noticing I was feeding around the same like hour windows throughout the day, uh, but I wasn't putting him on a schedule at this point. I just was making sure he was feeding every three hours. And so I feel like that's something that like just started from the beginning, like when he was a newborn, that was super helpful. Throughout the night, I had to wake him clearly, and so I would set alarms and just stay on track of feeding him every three hours but around four weeks uh, we had a pediatrician appointment and he had said like everything I was doing was great just to keep up with it and so I decided to start stretching out the night a little bit which I'm gonna explain later on in the video of like how I stretched out the night but people were asking around what age I started and I just wanted to clarify that at the beginning he was about four weeks old when I strictly tried to put him on a schedule now I don't follow a certain course but I would say the course I follow closely or close enough to is the taking care of babies course. I have a sister-in-law who did not take this class but her principles that she followed is very similar and her kids sleep like angels and so I've just been listening to her advice and that's where I got my information. So if you're looking for a course I would say take the taking care of babies course because it's probably the most similar and it's very helpful from what I've heard from people. Okay so a good night's sleep starts with a good day of sleep which I know that may seem like that doesn't make sense because I used to think like, oh, if he slept poorly throughout the night, he must be super tired, like he's gonna sleep so well tonight. That's totally wrong. So that works vice versa. Like if they sleep really bad throughout the day, they're most likely gonna sleep really bad throughout the night. So I would really focus on making sure that you get the naps in during the day and trying to stick to the schedule as much as you can just so that he is not, he or she, sorry, my baby's clearly a boy, so I always say he, but just to make sure that a baby is not overtired because that will not allow for a good night's sleep. So I just wanted to say that at the beginning too before I get into all of this. Okay, so what I follow basically is the eat, play, sleep method. So Rocky will eat and then from the beginning, so say he starts feeding at 7 a.m., that's the beginning of his wake period. Uh, after he eats, I'll have him stay up for an hour. Uh, at the newborn stage, so anywhere from zero to 12 weeks, it's recommended to keep them up for like 60 to 90 minutes. I have noticed with Rocky, a soft spot is 60 minutes. So an hour exactly after he started feeding, I will put him down. During that hour he's awake, I will play with him. I will try my best to get all of his energy out and give all of my attention to him. And that way he's tired for his nap. So we will read books, we'll do tummy time, he'll play on his play gym, um, I'll sit him up a lot so he can like kind of strengthen his neck and his back that kind of thing sometimes I'll take him outside or take him for a walk or anything like that just stimulate him as much as I can so that he gets his energy out and then at that 60 minute mark I put him down I'll explain the naps here in a second but from that 60 minutes he is supposed to sleep for two hours until he wakes up to feed again so it's eat play sleep I really try not to feed him to sleep because I've just heard that babies become reliant on that and it makes it super hard but 
Again, take all of this with a grain of salt. Whatever works for you is great, but that is just what I do. I also wanted to point out if you don't know if like 60 minutes will be good for your baby or 90 minutes will be good, I look for tired cues. The biggest ones I see is his eyebrows turn red and his eyes, like the like perimeter of his eyes get really red. He also starts to get cranky. If he's doing something and all of a sudden he's just like not enjoying it anymore, that's usually a sign. And then if he like arches a lot and like his back is super stiff, that's another sign too. So if you guys are noticing any of those uh, like symptoms, I guess you could call it, your baby is probably tired and I would start the process of putting them down for a nap. Okay, before I get into the naps, I just wanted to reiterate, this is probably my most important tip. If your baby is asleep at the three hour mark, wake them up to feed them. You have to make sure you're getting all the calories in during the day so that they can go during the night because they're full from the day. So if they fell asleep 45 minutes ago and instead of taking a two hour nap, they're taking a 45 minute nap, it sucks, but you gotta wake them up. You gotta wake them up at that three hour mark from the last, the beginning of the last feeding. That way, like I said, they get all their nutrition in. As far as naps go, I make sure as I'm, we have a two story, so as I'm walking upstairs with Rocky, I turn on our sound machine. We have a Hatch Baby sound machine and so I can control it from my phone. And I always put the same sound on. He likes the water sound, that's what he sleeps to a nap, that's what he sleeps at night, I just keep it consistent. I'll turn that on so as we enter the room, it is, ready and he kind of just like it's a trigger for him that it's time to sleep i make sure all the windows are shut but it's not like pitch dark in our house our house is very white and bright and so like right now i'm filming at five o'clock and it's still pretty bright but i try and get it as dark as possible and then i have him take his naps and his snuggle me sometimes he takes naps in cribs but lately i've been having him in the snuggle me and just having him in the room with me as i work because i found that's easiest but if you do the crib that's totally great too I do suggest introducing the crib as soon as possible, so I'm kind of getting off on a tangent, but um, I have done that with Rocky and he loves sleeping in his crib and that just makes it easier for when the time comes for him to sleep throughout the night. So anyways, back to naps. So I walk in the room and I have the sound machine on. I follow the five S's to get him asleep for a nap. So the five S's are swaddled, which I don't do until the end when I put him down. Um, it is a side or stomach position, so I turn Rocky's belly facing my belly, and he's in my arm in a cradle position, and he is up close to me. Um, he, especially right now, he's going through like an eight-week leap. He loves like the physical closeness and just like the touch, so I turn him towards me. Um, I give him a binky, so the second S is sucking, so we've got side or stomach sucking. Uh, I swing back and forth, so swinging or swaying is a third S. Fourth S is shushing, so even though the sound machine is on, I'll sit there and I'll go shh. Okay, you'd think I'd learn, but I still haven't formatted my card, so I ran out of storage again, but I think I was on the fourth S, which is shushing, so like I said, even if the sound machine is on, I'm sitting there going shh. And then once I see that his eyes start to kind of like glaze over and he's getting close to falling asleep, I will lay him down and swaddle him and then put him down. So he's not completely asleep when I put him down. That is just honestly, like I don't want to wait till he's completely asleep, but another point is it makes it easier for them to self-soothe and fall asleep on their own. So that is what I do for a nap. Now, typically he'll wake up around 45 minutes to an hour of his two hour nap. Sometimes he has to spit up. He has a really like reflex spit up baby. Sometimes he just like kind of startles himself and he wakes up or I don't know why he's waking up. But I will go over and first make sure that he's asleep. So the first thing that you want to do is like make sure you don't wake them up. My son sleeps with his eyes like partly open, which is like super hard to tell if he's actually asleep or not. And so I'll kind of make sure he's not totally awake or if he is, I'll put my hand on his stomach. If that doesn't do it, I will start to rub his head. He just really likes me like playing with his hair or rubbing his temples. Uh, and that typically will get him back to sleep. Another tip that you can do is to turn up the sound of the sound machine, especially during the day, there's a lot of noises. We have dogs barking all the time, um, and sometimes that's what's waking him up. So I'll turn that up a little bit. I'll also shush and see, but if all of that's not working, I'll do one of two things. I'll pick him up and start over the five S's. Sorry, I'm talking with my hands so much, but I'll start over with the five S's and see if that works, or if it's been about 45 minutes, I will let him stay up for another 30 to 45 minutes and then try and put him down again for another 45 minutes. So then that kind of com completes the three hour mark. If it's been like two, two and a half hours when he's waking up from the beginning of his feed, so say he slept for like an hour and a half, I will normally just keep him up 
feed him again and start over the entire three hour process. I'm not super strict about the schedule and I do want to comment on that because I used to be and it would stress me out if he wouldn't get the full hours, full two hours of sleep. Um, and then I would just get super just like frustrated and I would spend the entire time trying to get him back to sleep and he wasn't happy and I wasn't happy and it was just craziness. So my biggest tip with this as well is don't be so strict. Follow a routine but not a strict like schedule. So I'm going to give you guys like the typical times of the day that I do things but they vary every single day and I just want you guys to be like super cautious of that to not be like okay it's 8 a.m he needs to be up from 8 to 9 now it's 9 he needs to be down from 9 to 11 like don't be so crazy with it because I promise you from experience you'll go kind of crazy what up dude is he awake okay I'll be in there in a second okay bye Okay, this is kind of fitting because Rocky's only been asleep for 35 minutes and Nathaniel's in there saying that he's awake. So I'm gonna go do the five S's and try and get him back to sleep. I'll be right back. This is a perfect example of when he doesn't wanna go back to sleep. And so we'll keep him up for another 30 to 45 minutes and then try and put him down for another nap. But it is also like 5.15 or so. And this is a time of the night where he just doesn't want to sleep as much. He was just looking at us smiling. So you just kind of roll with it. Like I feel like you can't be super crazy because if you just spend your entire like day forcing sleep and then he's not happy, you're not happy, it's just crazy. So I just really want to reiterate, don't be so crazy about the schedule. <laughs> he's arching so much. Do you see yourself, baby? <gasps> Look. Hi. <laughs> You say hi. I love you. You got him? Yeah. Okay. Off you go. Yeah, it's only been an hour and 20 minutes. So we'll try and put him down within the next like 30 to 40 minutes. Okay. okay, so we're gonna move into the nighttime and just like the nighttime routine that we have. This is something we do every single night just to make sure that he is consistent and he just kind of knows like all right, it's bedtime, which I'm sorry, my hair's like in my mouth. But the biggest thing I feel like that has been super helpful with Rocky too is consistency. Like when I throw off like just a typical routine, he doesn't do well, I don't do well. It's just like a huge thing. So for back, we do, or I'm sorry, for the nighttime, we do the same thing every single time. So our nighttime routine starts with a bath. I know um, some people say don't bathe your, ba your baby every single day. Rocky's skin has been completely fine. We don't wash his hair every single night because we have noticed that his head will get kind of dry, but we do wash his body every single night. He loves bath time and he does well with it. So again, if you're concerned about it, ask, ask your pediatrician, but this is what has worked for us. So we'll do a bath. Nathaniel always bathes him. I'll put in like a little thing right here, but it's kind of become their time. And I just literally sit like this and smile <laughs> because it's so cute to me. So he will get bathed and then we'll bring him over. We'll put lotion and we'll put pajamas on him. Side note, if you guys have a hot, sweaty baby, still put pajamas on them. We weren't, and I think we just were nervous that he was gonna get too hot, but when we did, we were getting like two hours extra of sleep at night. So still put pajamas on your baby. If you're nervous, just turn your air down a little bit. But he'll do pajamas, and then, I think I said lotion already, we'll give him his vitamin D because he's breastfed, and then I will nurse him, and then he'll be burped, and then we'll read a book to him swaddle him and put him down and every time we put him down he's awake and he will just fall asleep on his own that's something that i feel like we've done from the beginning and he's done super well with we'll put him in the bassinet next to us in the bedroom and nathaniel and i will watch tv right now um we've noticed he wakes a little bit easier or he's like more curious he's in an awareness stage and so we've been watching the laptop in the bed with airpods but before we would just turn on the tv and he would do fine so my biggest tip with this is just to always keep noise on because if they're not used to it then that's what's going to wake them if your baby doesn't do well in the bassinet um i feel like one i would try a new bassinet i it's hard because we didn't struggle with this too much um, he has really done well in there. I've had a few people ask about this So if you're not swaddling them definitely swaddle them so they're nice and tight Yeah, I'm not a huge help with that part which I apologize if that's what you came for but 
I feel like just getting them used to it is just like the biggest thing that has helped us. Okay, when they wake at night, there's a couple things that I try my best to do. So the first thing is I try not to talk to Nathaniel or Rocky. If I look at him and get him all riled up and get him smiling, like he'll just be like up. And so we try not to talk to him too much. Um, or get him too fussy we try and keep the lights off so we turn on the hall light in his room not his bedroom light um and people say to like treat it as like a business meeting between you and your baby i'm not like that crazy about it but i just try not to stimulate him too much i feed him burp him and put him back down um, it's just a very quick thing people also say to limit changing him which we've never been crazy about but if like his pee if he just like has a little bit of pee like you can fill the diaper or she sorry um and it's not like too full then i would just leave it and feed them and put them back to bed but if it's like a really full diaper definitely change it uh, but those are a couple tips to like keep them not super stimulated at night so that they go straight back to bed okay so another question i had a lot of people ask was like how did you stretch the night so around four weeks i started following the whole like however many weeks old they are is how much time they can sleep at night but i also started to not wake him during the night and let him wake us so until four weeks i woke him up every three to four hours or so i would do four hours sometimes but after that i just started letting him wake us up but I would set an alarm for like, so for a week five, I set it at five hours because one, I didn't want to get mastitis for my boobs getting too engorged, but two, I wanted to make sure he was getting enough food. And so for that week, I would do like five, five and a half, and just kind of like slowly increase it by 30 minutes. And now a lot of times too, like he would wake up before then, like he wasn't getting used to it yet, which is totally fine. But I tried my best if he didn't wake up to slowly stretch that. So at six weeks, I would do six hours, seven weeks, I did seven hours, that kind of thing. So I hope that makes sense. If you feel like you need to pump, I would definitely do it, but I wouldn't like fully drain your breast because uh, breastfeeding is a supply and demand. So the more that you pump, the more you're gonna need to pump. And so I would just do it to top you off so that you don't get mastitis, but like not enough that your body thinks it's like a full another feeding throughout the night. So I hope that's helpful. Okay, so I'm gonna leave a sample schedule of my day like in a little picture right here for you guys But basically like say he wakes up at 8 a.m. He'll feed 9 a.m. He'll um, or until 9 a.m. He'll play and then from 9 to 11 He'll take a nap and then 11 he'll feed 11 to 12 He will play and then 12 to 2 he'll take a nap and so on So that's kind of what it is at the night time is where things get a little bit crazy his last nap So say he eats at 4 um and then he typically eats at like five last, so I'll do that. So say he eats at five, at six I'll put him down and he'll sleep for 30 minutes max. Like that nap is always the shortest nap ever and that's okay. Six to seven is our witching hour, which is like super hard to just like keep him happy. Um, and so I'll let him get that 30 minute nap try for the nap because when I wasn't trying for a nap it was like he would stay up for three hours and then go to bed and it was just it was awful to be honest he would not not have it so try and get at least a 30 minute nap in there and then if, to entertain him we'll go on a walk a lot so that he can like get outside and like he'll see the sky or he'll see the stars and like he really likes that and then we'll start our bath time process between the seven and eight o'clock hour so typically around like 7 15 7 30 that's when we start our bath process so that way I feed him around 7 30 7 45 and by 8 o'clock he's down in his bassinet ready to sleep so that's kind of just the times of when we do things but again to each their own um a lot of people will try and stretch the night by doing a dream feed around like 10 or 11. me and nathaniel go to bed like literally by nine o'clock at night um rocky goes to bed at like eight and we stay talk like watch a tv show and then we go to bed and so I don't want to wake up an hour or two hours later, but also I have tried it and Rocky doesn't want to wake up either. He's just like totally tired. So if you want to try that with your baby or if you stay up till 10, you can just stretch that, have them up from like seven to eight and then sleep and then feed them one more last time. You can do that as well. Uh, but again, it didn't really work for me. So try it out. People swear by the dream feeds. Okay, so I have a couple random tips that I want to share with you guys. The first thing is babies will give you one stretch of a long hour without going without eating that was really weird the way i said that but basically what i'm saying is if they wake up at five hours after that they're probably going to wake up every three hours so you want to stretch that first period as much as you can and then after that like you're just kind of done for so i would really work on stretching that period of time the best that you can i didn't know that so say at the beginning he would go down at like seven or eight he would wake up at like 12 or one i wanted him to then sleep from like one to six but he'd always get up around four or five and i was just like what the heck but i learned it's because they only have one long 
uh, sleeping period so just kind of a good thing to know I had someone ask like don'ts of sleep training which I feel like you just don't focus on the don'ts I feel like there's so many things that you're not supposed to do as a mom or that can ruin your baby's whatever and I just think it's too much like if you have to rock your baby to sleep great um, if you co-sleep great like the thing that I try and remember is they're only gonna be this little for this long and you're gonna miss these days you know what I mean and when they're 18 years old they're not gonna want you to hold them they're not want you they're not gonna want you to sleep with them so I wouldn't stress it too much um, if they are super clingy during the day my biggest tip is to baby wear um, the two brands that I really like are the Solly baby wraps which is a wrap and then I like the wild bird sling which is a sling it's like a ring sling those can be ways where you can be hands-free and hold your baby and keep them happy and if that's how they have to nap that's how they have to nap okay I'm slowly losing light but I had you guys ask a few questions about sleeping so I have a few on here falling asleep on their own if you're a new mom try and do it from the beginning try to put them down without rocking them if you already have a baby that needs to be rocked to sleep I would say just slowly try and pull back how far you rock them to sleep so if that makes sense so like say it takes you you rock them where they're like completely dead asleep try the next time to rock them like until they're like pretty much asleep but not and then after that where they're starting to get tired and do you know what I mean just like slowly try and decrease the amount that's my best tip for that again I didn't really struggle with that so I'm sorry if I can't really help in that area someone asked if it was hard adjusting to him sleeping longer like if I would wake up and check on him and lose sleep and be paranoid and that kind of thing so yes when I say Rocky sleeps 11 hours I definitely wake up a couple times to put the binky in his mouth to put uh, my hand on his chest if he's kind of just like grunting and moving around so I don't get 11 hours of sleep but also if you're really like paranoid about that there is the outlet sock that can track like the breathing so I would recommend getting one of those if you just need something to ease your mind someone asked about the binky like if I have to put it in if it falls out and yes I do a lot of times Rocky will spit it out and he won't want it um, but in the middle of the night I will wake up because he's kind of just grunting and I'll try and put it back in his mouth and he'll take it someone also asked like if I was worried about giving the binky too early if I had any issues with that and I give a binky in the hospital and I didn't have any issues but I personally just felt like I wanted to give it right away so that way they knew like there was two different things and like the binky has been such a huge like soothing thing for us so I personally didn't struggle with that, but I have heard people say that they that it causes nipple confusion. I think to each their own. I would try it personally because that's what I did. Someone asked about the cry it out method. Um, luckily, Rocky doesn't really cry when he's going to bed or in the middle of the night. He just grunts. And so I, if he ever does experience that, which I mean, he probably will at some point, I'm going to try the three, five, 10 method, which means like go in at three minutes and try and soothe them, put your hand on them, um, kind of rock their belly, say shh, rub their head, that kind of thing. And then go in at five minutes and then go in at 10 minutes. And if at that point they're still crying, I will pick them up. So that's what my sister-in-law advised me to do. So if I ever have to deal with that, that's the method I will try and follow someone said if he just doesn't go down what would you do and i personally would start over my uh, night routine so i would start with another bath read a book lotion all that kind of stuff and just see if that works or i would just play with them honestly like rocky didn't want to sleep longer than 45 minutes for one of his naps today and so i just laid there with him and then i played with him and i just skipped that nap and the next time he was tired sooner than an hour but it just slowly gets it off track and you just kind of have to do your best so if you're forcing a, a nap too much i would say just let them be awake they're gonna fall asleep at some point they're gonna get tired at some point do something to tire them out maybe get them playing do tummy time that kind of thing and then hopefully they'll be tired someone asked about falling asleep in unsafe places like the snuggle me that kind of thing um our pediatrician scared the shit out of us for the first week they told me basically i was going to kill my baby if i had him sleep on my chest or in a snuggle me so that really scarred me but for naps rocky sleeps every single nap in a snuggle me pretty much and he loves it so as long as like you're awake and watching him they say there's no risk but again i know a lot of people that have their baby sleep in a snuggle me and they're perfectly fine i have seen rocky he's now two months old completely turn his head and his nose is nowhere near touching it um another thing that you could do is if you're concerned about like if they're a stomach sleeper or a side sleeper there is a newton mattress that's 100 percent breathable it is 300 dollars um if you look there's a 50 dollar coupon from other influencers but that's the one i got so that when he sleeps in his crib i don't have to stress too much but that's an option as well 
Someone asked how I got to them to sleep in multiple places and I did this from the beginning when he was a newborn. I would have him nap in our room, he would nap in his room, he would nap in the living room, just every little place because at that point they're just tired and so that gets them used to it at an early age. I also always kept the sound machine on so that I could still make salsa in a blender if I wanted to. Nathaniel just did that tonight so that's why that popped in my head. Um, but so I could do things and not tiptoe around my house and be afraid of waking him up so I highly recommend that too. Okay, I'm sorry if it seems like I'm rushing this. It is literally so dark, I apologize. But the last thing I wanted to touch on was cluster feeding while sleep training. And this is something, again, you just kind of have to go with the flow of your baby. If your baby wants to feed every two hours, then your nap period is one hour. And then just, I don't know, you just kind of have to give yourself grace and remember that they're little and it's not gonna be perfect. I'm a type A person that loves schedules and so I'm right there with you if you're feeling like it's just never the way you're, you're wanting it to be, but your baby's learning too. just remember that and just kind of go with the flow every single time that I feed Rocky I start over with the schedule and so I don't focus on like how many or at what times throughout the day he went on I'm just kind of going off the last feeding so I hope that is helpful I hope this video is helpful to you guys I hope it just is what you guys needed to get some sleep I always respond to my DMs on Instagram so if you have more questions just DM me my Instagram is at Kyleen Rael I'll leave it at the end of the video as always and yeah I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.